Hey everyone, Jared here, helping you build on Abstract. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to submit a batch of transactions using the Abstract Global Wallet. This is really awesome inside of applications that do things like trading of tokens. For example, you can batch the approval and the transfer transaction into a single call, making the overall UX a lot cleaner. Let's get right into it. One of the most frustrating parts of Ethereum UX today is that you need to do a two-step process when you're trading with tokens. So for example, if I want to swap between a token, let's say ST Avail here back to ETH, this is actually gonna require two steps. So let's do 0.1 here. I'll swap that over to ETH and you'll notice it says approve and swap. And if I click this, it's actually going to be a three-step process, which involves two transactions. The first prompt here is for the approval. So it's going to ask permission to spend the balance of my ST avail here. And if I click next, this transaction is gonna cost roughly $2.71 in gas fees. If I click approve, then I'll have to do step number two here, which is sign a message. And then a third step is actually the second transaction, which is perform the swap that I want to make between ST avail and ETH here. With Abstract Global Wallet, thanks to its smart contract capabilities under the hood, it can actually batch transactions together. And today I'm gonna to show you how to do that using our SDK. What I'll show you how to do is what we're looking at here. We'll build out a little demo where we batch the approval and the swap transaction into a single transaction, meaning instead of three interactions, the user only signs one simple transaction and it does all of this in one transaction under the hood, performing the approval and the swap in a single batch transaction. Here's a little demo of what it will look like. So instead of a three-step process, I'll go ahead and sign in with Abstract here, sign in using my Google account and connect to the application. I built a little demo UI. So let's say we swap 0.01 my token into ETH, click trade tokens. Instead of three separate prompts, this is gonna be reduced down to a single call. We'll click sign and continue and the transaction will go through instantly. We'll click view on Explorer just to show you exactly what's happening under the hood here. You can see we swapped 0.01 my tokens to WETH and then over to ETH, and this is using Uniswap under the hood. So here you can see in the calls, you can actually see, hey, it's actually doing the approval first and then doing the necessary transfers to facilitate that swap. So it's batching those two transactions together to provide a more seamless user experience, especially if you're building anything like uh, trading coins or a decentralized exchange, something along those lines on abstract. In this video, we're gonna use the abstract global wallet and I'm just showing you the documentation if you wanna read any part of the documentation yourself. It is docs.abxyz and you click on the abstract global wallet section here. We're going to build a React application using the a React package. Specifically, we're going to access the client using the use abstract client hook and we'll perform an action from that client called send transaction batch. So here's all the documentation you need if you wanna check it out yourself. But in this video, I'll give you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to achieve what I just demoed at the beginning of the video. All right, to get started, we're gonna jump into the terminal. And if you already have a project, you can skip ahead 30 seconds. I'm just gonna create a project from scratch and set up the Abstract Global Wallet SDK quickly before we showcase the send transaction batch. There'll be timestamps in the description if you wanna skip forward. So I'm just gonna create a simple application here. Let's just say Vite project. We're going to use React with TypeScript and we can CD Vite project. And instead of running NPM install straight away, I'll just clear this up. And we're actually going to run NPM install at abstract dash foundation slash AGW dash react. And while that happens in the background, I'll just show you the documentation for the native SDK integration here. So you can see this is the step that we're doing. We're just installing the dependencies. We may install Wagme. You can optionally install VM and Tanstack query as well if you choose to. But the next step we're gonna do is wrap the application in the abstract wallet provider here. So we just install the dependencies, wrap our application so that we can use all of the hooks from the SDK. And then we'll use that to grab the abstract client and start submitting transactions. All right, sweet. And then we can open that up. I'm just using a uh, cursor as my text editor here. Once we're in here, we're gonna wrap our application in the abstract wallet provider here. So we'll import that on line number five, 
wrap the application inside of it. And then we just need a little config object here to declare the testnet is equal to true. So when I'm making this video, we only have testnet depending on when you're watching it. And if you want to use testnet or mainnet, set this to true or false. All right, so that's all we need to do. Now on the homepage app.tsx, we can safely delete all of this, remove the dummy state. And what we're gonna do here is we're first going to add a login button. And then once the user is logged in, we'll present them a simple button where they can submit a batch transaction. So to do that, we're gonna use a couple of hooks from the SDK. The first one we're gonna use is the use login with abstract hook which as you can see, exposes a login and a logout function. And this is basically going to prompt the user to log in or connect to the application with their abstract global wallet, which is a social sign-in, which connects the user to the application with a smart contract wallet that gets generated for them. So to do that, we're gonna use a couple of hooks and I'll just add some comments here to kind of make sure we're clear on what we're importing and why we're using them. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to ask the user to log in with the abstract global wallet. The second thing we're gonna do is get the abstract client, which is what we can use to perform actions from the connected wallet once the user has connected. So here we can do things like send transactions or deploy contracts, or in this case, send a transaction batch. So to do that, we're gonna use the use abstract client hook. So we'll just say get the client to start sending transactions from the connected wallet. And then thirdly, we're actually just going to perform an action called send transaction batch from the client we got from step number two. So we'll say use the client to submit a transaction batch. So for step number one, we use the use login with abstract hook. So we're gonna say const login equals use login with abstract, import that on line number one here. And then secondly, we're going to say const, and we'll do open curly brackets here, is equal to use uh, abstract client. And again, we'll import that on line number one here. Close those brackets off. And then within here, you can see what we have available. The main one we're concerned with is data. And we can rename that to the AGW or abstract global wallet client. Okay, so then on the UI, we'll just do a div that centers everything on the page just to make it simple. And then within here, we're going to first show a button to log in. So to do that, we'll say button on click is equal to login. And this is going to say login with abstract, and we'll save. Second thing we're going to do is a button to submit a transaction from uh, the connected client. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, if there is an AGW client, so AGW client, and then we can render another button, which we will leave empty for now. We'll say, submit a batch of transactions. Cool, so we'll jump into the terminal here and we'll run npm run dev and visit this URL. And what we can see is we have the login with abstract button here. This will prompt the user to connect their wallet to the application. If they haven't already made one, it will ask them to sign up with social logins here. So I'll go ahead and click approve. And now we are connected to the application. I'm just keeping it super simple for this tutorial, but likely you would want to use something like Wagme to check the uh, status of the connection. So if there is an account, you can do some kind of conditional rendering on the UI to say, if there is an account, don't render the login button again, obviously. But in this tutorial, I'm just gonna keep it really simple and just render both buttons at the same time. So as you can see, once the wallet is connected and the client is now set, we see the submit a batch of transactions button. So let's go ahead and actually write that part now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually go ahead and install those dependencies that I was talking about earlier because I just realized we'll need a couple of utility functions from the VM library to do this. So we'll install Wagme and we'll install VM here. I'll clear that up and then jump back into this. And essentially what we're gonna do here is just write an async function called submit batch. And within this, we're gonna grab the AGW client and we're gonna call a function on it called send transaction batch. So what we're gonna do is say const batch transaction hash is equal to await agw client dot send transaction batch here. And if you look at this, if we open it up, there's gonna be a couple of options that we can pass into it. So the first one is calls. The other two are related to paymasters. And we have videos on the channel about paymasters if you wanna learn more, but essentially these two are if you wanna sponsor the gas fees for your users of this batch transaction here. But for us, we're going to call this calls function here. 
And this is an array of transactions that you want to happen within this batch. So any transaction object that you put in this calls array here is going to get batched up into a single transaction call. So within this, we're going to first approve a balance to be spent. So we're going to call the approve function. And then we're actually going to perform a swap via a Uniswap that is deployed onto the abstract testnet. So we'll swap from uh, a token that I've deployed called my token into ETH here. So for each one of the calls you wanna make, you can just open an object and see any of the fields that you wanna provide. So for us, the first one is going to be approve. So we'll say uh, the ERC20 token that I've deployed, you can see is this my token contract here. So, so we're gonna send the transaction here. That is going to be the to address of our transaction object. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to provide this data field. And for this, we're going to call a utility function from VM called encode function data. So on line number six here, that's where it's being imported from VM. And that's just why I installed that package here. So encode function data is gonna accept a couple of things. The first one is the ABI of the smart contract that we're interacting with. So luckily for us, again, VM has an ERC20 ABI that we can import. And that is again, gonna be on line number six. So that is it for the ABI. And the function name we wanna call is the approve function. And approve, if you don't know, just allows a smart contract to spend the balance that you approve on your behalf. So if we approve 0.1 tokens, for example, to a specific smart contract, that smart contract then has the approval or the permission to spend 0.1 tokens on our behalf. So the arguments to this, there's two arguments to the approve function. The first one is the address of the spender that we want to approve. And the second argument is how much we want to approve. So how many tokens do we want? The address that we want to approve is the Uniswap V2 router in this case, and that is deployed here. So you can find that available on the documentation. We have a couple of different deployments here that are open for anyone to use. So for us, we're going to use Uniswap V2 router address here. So for our args, the first argument in this array is going to be that Uniswap address. And the second argument in this array is going to be how many tokens we want to approve. So for that, again, we can use another utility function called pass units. And that is again from VM here. And basically this just allows us to format it in the required uh, format, which I believe is GUI. So instead of doing like this big long number here, we can just say 0.1 and the 18 decimals of our token. We just need to add a comment, uh, sorry, a comma separating these args. And that is good to go for our first call. Just for this next step, I thought I would show you the function that we're gonna call. And that is this swap exact tokens for ETH here. So you can see it has one, two, three, four, five parameters that we need to provide. And I'm not gonna go too deeply into what these are because maybe you, the viewer, are not calling a Uniswap or you already know what it is, but I'm just showing you this is the function that we're gonna call and the arguments we need to provide here. So now the Uniswap smart contract has the approval to spend our 0.1 my tokens. What we're gonna do is swap 0.1 my tokens into ETH. And that's what this function enables here. So to add a second transaction into our batch, we just simply create another object and we continue with the same pattern that we did with the first one. We send it to, this time we're gonna send it to the Uniswap smart contract address, and we'll provide the data in an encode function data object again. So the function name that we just saw was swap, swap exact tokens for ETH, and this needs to be function name, sorry, not function. The args that we need to provide were those five arguments that I just showed you. So the first arg is amount in. So this is basically how many tokens are we going to provide from the MTK or my token token. So again, we can just do pass units 0.1. We're going to provide zero as the amount out. And this N syntax is just a big int format of the number zero. The third argument we need to provide is called the path. So this is basically just the two smart contract addresses of the tokens you want to swap to and from. So for us, that's the my token into the ETH. So for this, we're going to do open brackets, the address of the token, which we have up here. And what we're going to swap it into here is actually the address of wrapped ETH. And that is also deployed available on that document that I showed you earlier for the Uniswap address. That is this address here, OX9ED. The fourth argument that we need is the to address. So here we're going to provide again the address 
of the abstract global wallet that is connected. So we'll do a client, whoops, agw client.account.address. And then the final parameter that we need is the deadline. So here we're just gonna use this little snippet of code to say uh, the deadline for this transaction to go through is 20 minutes from now. So the final thing we need here is the ABI. And I'm just gonna go ahead and copy paste a snippet of the ABI since uh, the smart contract that you're using might be different. So here's what I added as the ABI. If you're curious, it's basically just uh, a template for this swap exact tokens for ETH function that we're making use of here. All right, so that is our second call. So we can go ahead and close this bracket up now. And as you can see, we make an array of calls. The first one was the approve function. And the second one is the swap function. So now let's just go ahead and console.log the uh, batch transaction hash out so that we can explore that uh, on the block explorer. And then the final thing we need to do is just attach this to the on click of the button here. So we'll say on click submit batch and we're good to go. So now we are already logged in so we can click log in again if we want to but we should be able to click submit a batch of transactions and since we're already connected with the abstract level wallet it's going to prompt us to sign this transaction and continue so i'll go ahead and sign and continue and what we should see in the console here is the that's very small so i'll zoom in a lot for you here is the transaction hash of the transaction that we just submitted so if we go to the block explorer and we paste our transaction address in, what we should be able to see is the swap or the batch transaction call that you made was successful. And if we jump into the logs here, just like the demo, we'll see the approval occurs first and then the necessary transfers for the swap to occur. So that transaction was successfully submitted as one single call from our abstract global wallet. So that's it for this quick little tutorial showing you how to make multiple calls batched up into a single transaction, something uniquely enabled by account abstraction, which is built natively into abstract. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. If it was, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our next video. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.